trainers are going to be throwing out their Pokeballs and seeing what, how it's going to go down in game one. And oh my goodness, Alex is going for it. There is a Regieleki and a Regigigas out on the field, whereas Wolf has gone for Regieleki and Cartana. So what dreams are made of, Lee? We've got two Regieleckis <laughs> on the field in our first game. Brand new Pokemon, very powerful, very fast. No wonder both players are using them. We've got an interesting board position here with Regigigas. It's actually slow start ability, which slows it down. It's attack and it's speed for four turns, really hindering it. So the sooner Alex can get potentially uh, a Pokemon like wheezing galarian wheezing onto the field with a neutralizing gas commonly what you see played with it onto the field it will really help benefit and make this regigigas very threatening very quickly got to watch out for the cartana that can potentially attack it with those sacred swords on max knuckles from wolf side of the field so both players got nice pivot options here to reposition if they don't feel comfortable right now well, Wolf going straight on the offensive, getting off to a very dominant start by going for that Dynamax, something we love to see in turn one. And it's going to be that Cartana, so potentially could be seeing some Max Knuckles coming out from Wolf's Cartana into that Regigigas. Obviously going to deal super effective damage, but also get that attack boost, um, making it even more threatening on the next turn. Alex also going to go for that Dynamax, and I'm not surprised to see um, it going to be that Reggie Gigas most likely, so that, you know, the Reggie Alecki could have the potential here to go for something like a Volt Switch, get in and out of the field after dealing a little bit of damage to the opposing side, and bring in that Weezing from the back to kind of negate that slow start ability that you were talking about, Lee. So the Reggie Gigas is in its prime and able to deal out a lot of damage. And that's exactly what we see happening here. Alex going for the Volt Switch into the opposing Reggie Alecki, doing a decent chunk of damage despite not being very effective and returning to its trainer and I honestly would not be surprised to see that wheezing come out here it'd be such good synergy between the Pokemon the neutralizing gas um, going to be negating the abilities but no it's actually going to be the Rotom heat as Regilecki on Wolf's side goes into the Regigigas and will also be switching out on the field I mean Alex bringing in the Rotom that's going to help against the Kartana Lee yeah, definitely against that Cortana and quite a smart play here from Alex. Maybe suspecting that it's too obvious if he has got the wheezing in the back to bring it in right now. And really utilizing something that is able to suck up those electric type attacks a lot easier than what we saw previously. Well, Cortana going for that max knuckle targeting down into the Reggie Gigas. So there's a huge chunk of damage almost takes it down um, to 50% with the double up from the Regieleki earlier. And as you can see, getting that attack boost as well. Dusclops also going to benefit from that. As Regigigas goes for the max strike into the Dusclops, an amazing switch there with Wolf Glick, bringing in a ghost type. Not going to worry about those max strikes. Yeah, amazing play there from Wolf and setting himself up really well for this next turn. Obviously, the ghost typing there coming in on the max strike that would have otherwise put the Regigigas in a pretty advantaged situation as long as that slow start kind of ends. At the moment, the Regigigas, if we see the Trick Room, would probably enjoy that for a few turns. Obviously, it's not going to be hitting as hard, though, with that slow start. The sooner Alex can get something like the Weezing onto the field and get rid of that slow start, the better things will start to get for him. But a really nice play from Wolf. Board positioning wasting a turn of dynamax from alex is always very useful you only get three of them per game so wasting one of them is an extremely good start for wolf here as he is sitting in a very nice position with that cartana boosted up but in an awful position against the rotom heat yeah, not something we see every day is the Dynamax Pokemon being recalled before the Dynamax turns it over. But Wolf doesn't really have an option. That Rotom Heat is pinning in the Cartana. Um, going to be able to obviously pick up a KO against it unless there was something like a Focus Sash. So bringing in the Tapu Fini is a greater option there for Wolf, preserving Cartana for later on in the game. And Rotom going for that Overheat into that slot. Tapu Fini obviously going to be able to take that much better than Cartana would have does about a sort of a, a fifth, a quarter of damage there. And that Rotom will have its special attack dropped. Regigigas, however, going to go for that Max Quake, targeting down into the Dusclops. Dusclops, of course, able to take that. It is such a bulky Pokemon. Um, but critically for Alex, he is getting that special defense boost. And with Tapu Fini on the field, that could help out as the game goes on. Tapu Fini, known as a special attacker Pokemon. Dusclops, not going for any Trick Room shenanigans here. Just going to go for that Nightshade and chunk away at that Rotom. Yeah, it's a really nice switch there from Wolf. You may think because he's Dynamax, he's Cartana, he doesn't want to waste those turns, wants to make the most of them. But I think Alex did very well in, in putting pressure onto the board with the Rotom Heat, which meant that really Wolf had to make a decision. Does he want to let the Cartana go down? Maybe take out the Regigigas in the process, but is that trade really worth it? And potentially a Max Guard there could have really cost him. So I like the play there. The Rotom obviously getting a bit weakened through that overheat, but again we are seeing it leave the field for that wheezing that's finally hitting the field here 
for Alex. Yeah, as Weezing joins the field, so does Reggie Alecki on Wolf's side as Reggie Gigas goes for that max strike. Going to be falling into the Reggie Alecki slot. And I feel like Wolf might have sacrificed this Pokemon just to preserve that Tapu Fini for later on. Um, you know, Tapu Fini can actually be such a good sort of Pokemon hitter out there and you want to make sure it's not going to fall down to a very easily targeted max strike there. Dusclops going to be giving a Null and Nightshade out this time to the Weezing. And of course, Dusclops doesn't mind taking those speed drops on the max strike either. It's already pretty slow. Yeah, and you know, nice, nice KO there from Alex, really picking up the opportunity to get something and get a target off with this Reggie Gigas, you know. The slow start isn't an issue anymore with that wheezing out in the field. We've seen the neutralizing gas activate, so that is a very good plot positive for the Reggie Gigas. But the Cartana coming back in for Wolf now is putting that Reggie Gigas under a lot of pressure. We saw the max strike go off the last turn, but unfortunately the Cartana was in the back and not affected by that speed drop. And we've also, Dusclops is such a slow Pokemon on anywhere it doesn't really be affected by any sort of speed drops at all it's always going to be most likely the slowest pokemon in the field so regigigas in an awkward position here we'll see what alex does he may want to adjust and get that rotom heat back onto the field to start pressuring that cartana again Cartana going for the Sacred Sword, actually going to target down into that Weezing, despite not being very effective as Richie Gigas able to go for that high horsepower. Cartana able to take it, but it still does a huge chunk of damage thanks to the Life Orb boost on that Richie Gigas. Weezing actually going to follow up with a Taunt here into that Dusclops, uh, maybe predicting Dusclops to go for some of the more tricksy moves it likes to go for, um, something like a Trick Room potentially, or even something like an Alice Witch or Will-O-Wisp, but instead just going to be sticking down for that um, Nightshade. Yeah, and you know, the, the, the Dust Clubs here is pretty free at the moment. I, I think Alex has done well to shut it down from potentially getting something like a Trick Room up, but really it's sitting on the field being able to just throw out these nightshades now reggie gigas yes is immune to this because of its normal typing but at the same time you really want to try and prioritize the dust clops because it is just getting a lot of consistent damage off every turn well, Tapu Fini going to rejoin the field for Wolf, and Weezing does go for that Protect, just wants to make sure it stays on the field so that Regigigas can still benefit from having its slow start ability removed. Regigigas, however, is going to fall victim to the Sacred Sword, but one of the other benefits of the Neutralizing Gas for Alex means that the Beast boosting ability on the Cartana isn't going to activate. It's not going to get an attack boost, potentially. I mean, we don't know which stat it would be, but most likely attack there on the Cartana Lee. Yeah, you would imagine it'd be the attack stat, which you see on most Cartonis here, and really nice effect there with the neutralizing gas. One of the, the biggest issues playing something like an Ultra Beast, like this Cartana, is once they start getting the, their Beast Boost picking up knockouts, then they start this momentum shift, and it starts to get very difficult to kind of prevent them from taking over the game. But by having the Weezing out on the field, you neutralize that, and it's a very nice way of kind of playing alongside the Reggie Gigas as well, taking away the slow start, but you also affect your opponent's maybe big kind of abilities that they rely on quite heavily here. Now the Tapu Fini coming onto the field to partner that Cortana, Reggie Alecki coming in for Alex. Now Reggie Alecki in a good position to really pick up a knockout onto the Cortana potentially or get some big damage into that Tapu Fini. Well, lots of switches and chopping and changing going on in this game one. Alex going to switch out and bring in the Rotom to apply pressure once against that Cartana, whereas Wolf is going to be bringing the Dusclops back into the action, activating its pressure here. Reggie Alecki going for that Thunderbolt, though. Super speedy Pokemon able to deal a good chunk of damage to that opposing Dusclops as Cartana follows up with a Leaf Blade, does huge damage to the Reggie Alecki, but not enough to pick up a KO against it as the Mist from Tapu Fini disappears. But of course, Tapu Fini is in the back. It can reset that a little bit later on. Yeah, now Wolf's got the Dusclops onto the field. At the moment, if you look at Alex's side of the field, he's got a very big advantage. He's got a way to knock out the Cartana with the Regilecki that will outspeed, and he's got the Rotom to potentially throw uh, an overheat that we saw earlier on in this match into the Dusclops. And maybe it's at low enough health at the moment to actually get the knockout, depending on how the Rotom heat has been trained on Alex's side of the field. So I think if you're Wolf, you want to get the Trick Room up right now. You want that speed control advantage, and then maybe get something like Tapu Fini in that can start wearing down and chipping away the last few Pokemon on Alex's side of the field. Now, if you're Alex, you need to prevent this Trick Room from going up, so you need to be able to remove that Dusclops on the field right now. 
Well, Reggie Alecki going to try going for that Volt Switch, but not enough. Dusk was able to hang on with 11 HP. So unless the Rosalm is going to follow up um, and pick up the KO against Dusk Lops, Wolf is in a position to potentially set up that Trick Room if that's what he has locked into. Weezing going to rejoin the field, saying to set the neutralizing gas and of course stop any potential Beast Boots from Cortana again if it's able to pick up a KO. Goes into the Weezing that is just able to hang on um, as Rotom goes for that Thunderbolt. So targets down into the Dusk Lops. It is enough to pick up the KO so Alex can kind of breathe a sigh of relief that he's got around this Trick Room. And of course, Weezing able to protect on the next turn, keep that neutralizing gas in effect. Yeah, and that's the, that's the key here for Alex, making sure that this Cortana cannot get any beast boosts if it does pick up the knockouts. I'm so surprised that the Weezing was actually able to take that attack <laughs> from Cortana. The Cortana is a very powerful Pokemon and the Weezing didn't have as much health, so to be able to actually take that attack is credible to Alex's training here. Now, Wolf in a difficult position once again, although he does have the speed advantage now with the Cortana that can get attacks off onto either opposing threat. The Rotom is going to be a bit of an issue you obviously it can attack into the cartana or it can choose to go after the tapu finny here if you're alex you probably want to try and get rid of the cartana as quick as possible it's the biggest threat to you at the moment i would say just because of that speed advantage that it's giving well, Wolf trying to get rid of one of his biggest threats with that Rotom. You know, it can deal super effective damage to oh. both of those Pokemon. But Cartana able to dodge right out of the way. Sludge Bomb going to go into Tapu Fini. Takes it down to a chunk of damage and actually gets the poison as well. Um, of course, the Neutralizing Gas stopped Tapu Fini from setting the Misty Terrain again. Uh, Rotom, however, is going to go down to the Water-type move from the Tapu Fini. So Cartana can breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief. It doesn't have to worry about taking any of those Fire-type moves again. I mean, what an amazing avoid from Cartana in that turn. Yeah, that was very unfortunate for Alex there. If it had hit, it would have definitely taken the Cortana down and it may have been a bit easier to wrap this <laughs> game up for him. Unfortunately, the Cortana still on the field, but not in the greatest position. Like we mentioned earlier, we had a similar board position where the Regilecki was out in front of this Cortana of, of Waltz and it does pressure a knockout with, with one of those big electric type attacks. Although the Weezing kind of playing a little bit counterintuitively here, not allowing this transistor ability on the Regia Lecky to activate because as soon as the, the wheezing is neutralizing gas is in effect, obviously that transistor boost isn't in effect on the Regia Lecky, which may hinder Alex slightly. Yeah, and Alex just playing um, a little bit defensively here on this turn, going for the double protect, trying to get a KO against that Tapu Fini, but it's able to survive on two HP with its poison. Um, also allowing him to kind of scout out what Wolf's going for. He's just going to be clicking in those moves to try and pick up the KO. Uh, Reggie Alecki, whether or not it can pick up a KO against the opposing um, Kartana, I'm not too sure with its ability being suppressed if it's going to have enough firepower in order to do that. And it also depends on the item that we see on the Cartana as well. That could definitely play into whether or not the Regieleki is able to get it. We know Cartana is very weak on its special defensive side, meaning that it is prone to some of these big special attackers. It can do a lot of damage, taking more damage than you would normally see. And here we go, Lou. Is it going to be enough? Oh, it's not enough. Cortana able to hang on thanks to its Assault Vest item by the looks of things. Leaf Blade going straight into that Regieleki and picking up the KO. Of course, still no Beast Boost, but there's really not a lot that Weezing can do to this Cortana. So instead, wisely targeted down that type of thing with Sludge Bomb, which may well be the only offensive move that that um, Weezing has. Often, you know, we see it having other things. You know, we've already seen the Taunt Protect um, Sludge Bomb on there as well. So it may not be able to even touch this Cortana. And either way, Cortana is going to be moving first and will be able to secure the KO meaning Wolf Click is going to be able to take this game one. And as we see, this Leaf Blade coming out, like you say, Lou, and going to make easy work of this very low HP Weezing and Wolf taking game one. And what a game for us to kick off with. Incredible game for us to kick off with today. And very close. It came down mm -hmm. to maybe one move in particular. There's definitely a move I would like to highlight. If that overheat had connected onto the Cartana, I think it would have been a little bit of a different game. I'm not saying the result would have changed, but I mm -hmm. think it would have played out a lot differently. Very unfortunate, but using these low accuracy moves, they come at a cost sometimes. Of course, when you look at something like Rotom Heat, it doesn't really have an option outside of overheat for a fire type stab, and that's one of the drawbacks with using it, but unfortunately it did cost Alex there, but Wolf cannot take anything away from him. We saw from mm -hmm. the start that game he knew what was coming from the Regigigas to switch into Dusclops wasting a Dynamax turn it was very nice and we saw him play quite conservatively as well with the Cortana he could have quite easily left it out when it was Dynamax on the field against that Rotom Heat a lot of players would be tempted to you only get three Dynamax turns so the fact mm -hmm. that he was like I say conservative and 
really thought out the end game early on and thought, okay, well, we'll just not worry about our Dynamax turns. I've got to keep this Cortana for the late game. We saw how impressive it was and able to kind of clinch the win there in a very, very close set. Yeah, the overheat miss certainly pulled the match in a very dominant direction, but I just want to touch back on that play where we've brought the Dusclops in, because not only does, like you said, waste a turn of the Dynamax, but the secondary effect of those Max Strikes is it lowers the speed of both the opposing Pokémon, and the fact that Max Strike wasn't able to connect meant Cartana avoided taking that speed drop as well. So it just goes to show kind of piloting the Pokémon in the way that Wolf did, just put himself at such an advantage, and like you said, playing conservatively, bringing that Cartana off the field when he did, a lot of players wouldn't necessarily be sort of brave or bold enough to do that but Wolf's able to clearly identify which Pokemon he needs in order to pick up the wins against his opponent's Pokemon and he knew Cortana was going to be needed towards the end even though you know there's a rote on there he has to find a way to get rid of it um, and he just you know piloted it really really well but Alex certainly has a few tricks up his sleeves that Reggie Gigas is pretty awesome. Yeah, definitely a very cool Pokemon and really nice to see it in action and it hits so hard, especially when it's got that wheezing next to it with that neutralizing mm -hmm. gas. And the neutralizing gas we saw as well, kind of not only supporting the Regigigas, but really, really conflicting what your opponent wants to do. You know, a lot of these Pokemon, like we mentioned the Cartana there with its Beast Boost ability, rely heavily on that to kind of get the momentum to start really snowballing in games. But unfortunately, as long as the Weezing is on the field, you can't actually get the benefit of that. We also saw the benefit of that with the, the Misty Terrain that wasn't able to activate mm -hmm. when the Tapu Fini hit the field. Uh, that led to the poison and things like that. So there are a lot of secondary kind of effects to that. So the wheezing, very important for Alex. But I think going into this next game, you need to have a, maybe a little bit of a, a another look at how to deal with the Cortana. It's such a threat. And you saw how difficult it was to deal with. I don't think Wolf's the sort of player that would allow you to really just pick up mm -hmm. and knock out easily. So it's going to be difficult to kind of maneuver around and get him in a board position where you're able to kind of lock that down, take that out, and then take the game forward from there. Well, it was certainly a dynamic game one, but let's kick it over to game two and see how our players are going to be adjusting. How is Alex going to be able to come back and fight around that Cartana or whether he's going to stick to the same plan, but this time Rotom might be a little bit more accurate with its overheats. It's going to be Reggie Lecky and Reggie Gigas out once again for Alex and Wolf changing things up a little bit. Dusclops out in front straight away with that Cartana once again. Yeah, nice to see the Cartana coming out again. We don't see the Rotom Heat come out for Alex, so that's interesting. But the Dusclops here, just to kind of maybe counteract those max strikes and give at least Alex only one option if he wants to go for those max strikes into Wolf's side of the field. Exactly, and Dusclops can go for a lot of tricks here. Potentially can try and get a Trick Room up. If it ha is carrying something like Ally Switch, that can also add a little bit of pressure to the Regigigas, maybe going for some of those max strikes. Of course, um, Regigigas can have access to Dark-type moves, can go for some of the max darkness as well, and that's something that the Dusclops doesn't want to be taking either. So Wolf certainly has a lot to think about. Um, and I think, again, in this turn one, the way that he might play it might try and determine how the rest of the match is going to go. Of course, Alex got that Reggie Alecki once again. It's going to be free to maybe go for a Volt Switch and allow Alex to change up his ball position while enabling a little bit of damage onto Wolf's side of the field. But first of all, it's going to be the Dynamax of that Reggie Gigas once again. So Alex going again straight on the offensive with the Reggie Gigas, but it's all going to come down to which Pokemon he's targeted and with which move, Lee. Yeah, this is going to be the thing. Is he going to get that wheezing onto the field early, unlike we saw last time, or is he going to go for the same play again and get that Rotom Heat onto the field? We don't see Wolf go for the, the Dynamax with the Cartana here, so that Regilecki getting some big damage off into the Cartana, which is going to be very useful later on in this game. And if we do see the wheezing hit the field now for Alex, it's going to be very close to whether or not the Regigigas can take down this Cartana with one of its big, powerful attacks without that slow start ability hindering it. Yeah, exactly. You know, Reggie Gigas, it needs to use these three Dynamax turns perfectly. You know, it lost one in game one, and that can have such a detrim detrimental effect if you're not able to pick up the maximum amount of damage potential that you can in your Dynamax form. It looks like Alex is really thinking about which Pokemon he wants to bring in. Is it time to bring in the Weezing and start giving Reggie Gigas its full potential? And that's exactly what he's gone for. So Weezing going to join the field, set that neutralizing gas, and give Reggie Gigas the best opportunity to deal some big damage. Cartana going for that Sacred Sword does a decent chunk, about a third of damage damage into that Regigigas and Regigigas is going to follow up with a Max Quake so boosting up the special defenses on Alex's side of the field doubling into the Cartana and actually manages to pick up a KO the double up of the Max Quake and the Volt Switch so Alex's main threat in game one was that Cartana and it is now gone 
Yeah, and like we mentioned before getting into the match, it's something that Alex really needs to concentrate on down and on Wolf's side of the team because of how threatening it was in that game one. And he's done that perfectly here. You know, Wolf not Dynamaxing it and getting some nice damage off into the Regigigas. We can't miss that. That is some very good damage with the Sacred Sword here. But losing the Cortana that was so pivotal in game one is maybe going to make things a bit difficult. But I say this and then the Glastria pops up onto the field as... You know, one of these Pokemon that really enjoys the Trick Room environment. Yeah, this is one of the Pokemon you highlighted at the beginning of the broadcast, Lee. It's a very slow Pokemon um, with its chilling nay ability as well as able to pick up a KO. It will get that attack boost. So it's a Pokemon that particularly if it's Dynamaxed up, gets that extra HP advantage. It can start really snowballing through the opponent's team once it's able to start picking up those KOs. So if you're Alex, you're going to have to really think of a way to neutralize it and stop it sort of going through the team and dealing damage and potentially try and waste some of Wolf's own Dynamax turns as well. Yeah, and Alex really does have a Pokemon that can come in that we saw him use in game one that does well against the Glastria, and that is the Rotom Heat. Obviously, we're not going to see Wolf go for a max this turn. wants to just bide his time a little bit. Well, a Protect a piece. Glastria going for that Protect, as is the Weezing. Just wants to keep the neutralizing gas out on the field and protect itself from the Nightshade from the Dusclops. Regigigas actually going to go for that max strike targeting down into the Glastria does a small chunk of damage there and of course going to be lowering um, the speed of the opposing Pokemon. That's not something you have to worry about in Trick Room at this stage. You know Wolf already has the slower Pokemon. What another speed drop here? Trick Room is already up. So wise protect there from the Glastria, otherwise that Max Strike would have done a lot more damage. Yeah, definitely. And it's a really nice play to, to predict the protect on the Weezing, thinking that that's probably the, the Pokemon that you want to get rid of if you're Wolf. You know, if you want to Dynamax the, the Glastria, you want to start getting activated those chilling nays. You can only do that if the, the neutralizing gas has left the field. Obviously, Weezing as well, weak to what is commonly used on Glastria with those ground type attacks. So it can go for a max quake into that slot, which would be very beneficial. And I don't think you worry too much about the Regigigas at this point. Well, Weezing going to actually leave the field, going to leave Regigigas to have its slow start, but bringing Rotom onto the field. Again, a Pokemon that can apply a lot of pressure to that glass tier. And you just mentioned Max Quake potentially going in the direction of that Weezing, and that's something that Rotom with Levitate ability isn't going to worry about at all. But of course, it all comes down to what Wolf has predicted. He is a player who is extraordinary at analyzing his opponent and sort of predicting things turns and turns ahead. Um, but for the moment, going to be Dynamaxing up that glass tree, and it's definitely going to be a formidable threat as it's going into its Dynamax as Alex's turns will be ending. Nightshade coming out from that dust box once again into the Rotom, going to deal a good chunk of damage as Glastria follows up with a Max Hailstorm targeting down into that Rotom that was previously wheezing and does a huge chunk of damage. Um, I don't think it has KO, but it took it right down and of course will set up the Hail as well. So that chip damage can come in so pivotal as these turns go on. And Rotom, yes, as you can see, able to survive and eating its berry as well. So going to regain a little bit of health thanks to the Citrus Berry as Reggie Gigas follows up for that max strike. So again, not worrying about these speed drops, dealing some good damage to Glastria, but as it has Dynamax, it has that extra HP. It's going to be able to take these attacks so much better than it did previously. Yeah, and with the Weezing leaving the field for Alex as well, that slow start ability activating again and then weakening the Regigigas, which is not really going to play into Alex's best laid plans. You know, the Regigigas now finishing its Dynamax turns and it's going to be a bit of a struggle. He needs to see out these Trick Room turns. The the Glastria is done so much damage to that Rotom. If he wants to go for a Max Hail into that slot again, he can potentially pick up a knockout there and it's not something that Alex will want to switch in the Weezing for. So maybe you see a Protect there and is it time to to just try and get rid of the Regigigas if you are Glastria here. The Dusclops can't hit that Pokemon, so if you can remove that, then you know the Dusclops can sit here quite happily and just it's turn after turn churn out these Nightshades that we've seen do so much damage. And Rotom might even be in range for a Nightshade right now, so that's something that Alex also needs to consider. That's the thing, even if it's not in range of the Nightshade, Nightshade plus Hail could be enough to remove it from the field. So Weezing is going to rejoin Rotom just staying safe, potentially needed for Alex when the Glastria is back to its normal size and can pick up a KO. The Regigigas knowing it might be the target going straight for this Protect as Dusclops does indeed go for that Nightshade, targeting down into the Weezing that's joined the field, does a little chunk of damage to it there. Of course, 50 HP will be removed as Glastria goes for that Max Quake, targeting down into the Regigigas does a little bit of damage through the Protect, but of course going to be getting up the special defense as well. And that's going to help out Wolf's side of the field when that Rotom is able to come back into the battle. 
Yeah, definitely helping because the one thing, once this trick room does end, the Rotom does threaten the Glastria pretty heavily with those big fire type attacks that we've seen it use in previous games. So getting these special defense boosts is a nice way to kind of counteract that a little bit and just prolong Glastria's ability to stay on the field for as long as possible. Now that Regigigas is in an awkward position where it's just protected. Does Alex want to let it go down now? Um, maybe just soak up another turn of Trick Room. It might not be the bad idea, especially with the, the Regigigas and the, the, the Regieleki and the, the Rotom in the back. Of course, and you have to keep an eye on the Trick Room turns here as well. You know, they don't go on forever. Um, so Wolf needs to make sure that he is making the most of each and every one. Going for another Max Quake here, targeting down into that Regigigas. It is enough to pick up a KO, and this is where um, the Weezing really does play its part because the Glastria does get another special defense boost, but normally its Chilling Nay ability would be able to activate and it would get that attack boost as well. But the Weezing able to stop that from going off just stops Wolf from getting that even stronger advantage. Yeah, and as we see, the Trick Room turns do end now. So the, the speed advantage is going to be back on Alex's side of the field. He did manage to get a couple of max strikes off into the Glastria and Dusclops. Not that really the speed tiers would really matter too <laughs> much at this point, but he does have access to Taunt on his Weezing that we saw from Game 1 that can shut down another potential Trick Room here. Uh, the Glastria now, not in its Dynamax forms, is very threatened by this Rotom, so probably forced to protect here. So whether or not, again, you want to see... Maybe Maybe a double up from the Weezing Rotom here into the Dusclops, maybe a Taunt, maybe a uh, Thunderbolt might be a nice option from Alex to try and prevent this Trick Room because again, if another Trick Room goes up, it might be a bit too difficult to kind of come back to in this match. Yeah, that's the thing. If you're Alex, you don't want to get that Trick Room back up. As well as you've sort of lowered the speed even further of this Pokemon, it's just going to be a perfect environment for them. Rotom, however, just going to go for a Protect here, as Weezing does indeed go for that Taunt, so locking down the potential for Trick Room from this Dusclops, and it just allows Rotom another turn to maybe scout out a potential Protect from that Glastria as well. Weezing, however, is going to fall victim to the high horsepower, so Alex will be down to his last two remaining Pokemon, and the pressure, of course, coming up from the Dusclops here, and Glastria is chilling Nay is now going to be able to activate such a kind of vengeful moment for the Glastria you know it didn't get its chilling Nay boost previously now it gets it again while picking up the KO against the Pokemon that stopped it from happening yeah nice play there from Wolf you see you expected the taunt there and I think if you're Alex you're kind of forced into going for that taunt to stop the trick room it really if the trick room goes up that is going to be maybe the end of this game and make it very difficult either way but maybe expecting the Glastria to protect there it was a nice play to get rid of the wheezing once that's removed like you say getting access to that chilling nay ability now puts Glastria in a really good position it's got an attack boost it's going to hit a lot harder but can Wolf manage to manipulate the board on his side Side to get that Dusclops back onto the field to get the Trick Room up again. Glastria going to protect on this turn though, doesn't want to take any damage from that opposing Rotom as Regilecki goes for the Thunderbolt, does a decent chunk there to the Dusclops as Rotom goes for the overheat into the Protect. Now is Dusclops going to be in a position to pick up a KO against this Rotom? Goes for the Nightshade, it is enough to pick up a KO meaning that Glastria is now sitting much safer than it was the previous turn with the hail ending as well so no more chip going about on the field but I wonder if Alex and this Regilecki, you know how much I love this Pokemon but I don't know if it is enough to go through all of Wolf's team at this stage. Yeah, and I think the special defense boost that Wolf got onto the Glastria and Dusclops earlier on are really paying off now, and I think it's a really smart option when he was Dynamax to take advantage of that max move, in particular knowing what Pokemon Alex had in the back to come in, both big special attackers, and you can see there how much damage the Dusclops took from, from that Thunderbolt that would normally do a lot more damage in that situation. Maybe the Dusclops is in a position to actually take an attack from the Regilecki, but you know, we at a stage now where Wolf has three Pokemon to the one Regilecki. It might be a little bit too much for little Regilecki to come back from. Well, it's going to try its best. Goes into the Glastria, but didn't get a critical hit, which I think it needed at this stage. So instead, going to have to take the close combat in retaliation. Will be KO'd. It can go back to its trainer, have a little bit of a rest. Um, and Glastria, same thing. You know, Glastria put in a lot of work in this game too. It deserves to go back to its Pokeball, as it has just won game two for Wolf Click.